Shalom, shalom. I'm the brother Yahweh Sub. All right, this is the brother I know. Back out here for another street lesson. I prophesying the downfall of Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, which is America, I'm preaching the good news, meaning the gospel, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. All right, and those who may look like other nations, but your seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, through the seed of your father. All right, so. That being said, as always, before we get started, right, we're going to give all praise, our honor, and our glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekak Wadash. All right, and double honors to the head apostles, plus elder bishops of the great millstone, who teach you who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety. All you sincere, I can keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of what people hear or what they forbear. All right, so once again, no lesson prepared for the day. We're going to be flowing in the spirit. All right. And Lord's will is edifying to the elect. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. I'm going to start in the book of Psalms, chapter 94, and verse 16. All right, give me uh, Isaiah 16. All right, Psalms uh, 94 and 16, it says, Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? All right. And who is that? That's us. Okay, that's the men of the Lord. We're the only ones that are going to come out here on the highways and byways and preach this word, destroy the wicked with the spirit of the, of the, of the Lord's mouth. All right, as it says in uh, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. All right, so the Lord, he, he's asking, he's saying, who's going to rise up against all the wicked of the earth, against the evildoers? All right, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, these heathen nations, all right, two-thirds of our own people. Who's going to call them out for all of their wickedness? All right. And we're here to tell you that we're the ones that the Lord has set up to do that, all right? That's the reason why we come out here week in and week out. All right, we preach, we prophesy, all right? Meaning telling you what's going to happen before it even happens. All right, we tell you all the schemes of the wicked, all right? The, the RFID microchip, all right? The mark of the beast, and all the different things that the elites, all right? The elites have uh, coming down the pipeline, all right? We prophesy, we tell you of the race wars, the class wars, the civil wars, economic woes, all right? Tell you of all these things to, to prepare you for the battle of the day of the Lord. All right, what they're not doing, you know, today's Sunday. You got a lot. You got majority of our people in the Sun Worship Temple. All right, they're not. They're not telling them the hundred percent truth according to the Bible. They're not preparing them for the day of the Lord. All right, but we, as the Watchmen, are we we've been set up and we're going to preach day and night, give you warning from the God of the Bible. All right, go ahead and bring that out. Isaiah. 62 and 6. Yep. I have sent watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which should never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Right? And I have said, watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Right? Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Okay? Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. Okay, so the Lord said, you know, what are the watchmen going to do? The watchmen, they're going to they're gonna be paying attention, seeing what's going on, all right, watching the news, all right, watching current events, lining up a biblical prophecy, all right, and they're going to give you warning from the God of the Bible, all right, telling you what's going to happen before it even happens, see? And it says they're not going to hold their peace day nor night, all right? Meaning regardless of what time it is throughout the day, all right, somewhere around the globe, you have the men of the Lord out there, Putting up video epistles, I preaching, prophesying, reproving, rebuking, exhorting, I with all long suffering, all patience, and doctrine, I with 100% truth according to the Bible. Okay, so we're gonna we're out here gonna do what the Lord commanded us to do, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I as the body of Yahweh Shai. All right, go ahead, and bring that scripture out. Isaiah 58 and one. Crowd aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. That's right. He said, "Cry loud, spare not." All right, meaning we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna lift up our voices like a trumpet. All right, meaning we're gonna be loud. All right, we're gonna we're gonna give it to you straight and skinny. I'm not gonna come to you, you know, mumbling, bumbling, fumbling. 
all right? Uh, giving you a bunch of crap, bunch of nonsense, prosperity gospel. We're gonna give you the 100% truth according to the Bible, all right? And we're gonna do it regardless of whether they hear or whether they forbear, all right? But he said, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sin, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna re rebuke you, all right? We're gonna rebuke you and tell you where you going off at according to the Bible. All right, give me uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 20, okay? We're gonna rebuke you according to the words of the Bible, all right? And that's commandment from the Lord. I tell you where you're going off at. Tell our people, you know, about these prophecies. Tell them what the Lord is coming back to do. I tell them that you can't, you can't be uh, celebrating the customs of the heathens no more. You can't commit adultery. Uh, you can't eat abominable foods. You have to return back to the laws, the statutes, and commandments. All uh, right, you're going to do that through faith in the Lord. Okay. Let me get this right quick. Uh, Salaki, bear with me. All right, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. All right, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. All right. And it reads, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. All right, edification. What does edification mean? Meaning to make you better, I right? reprove, okay? Speaking unto men to edification and to exhortation, all right? Uplifting, all right? Telling you to, to keep on pushing, okay? To not, not to give up the hope, all right? That, 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 that uh, salvation is coming, freedom is coming, all right? And exhortation and comfort, okay? So, so these words are also comforting. These words of prophecy, all right? Comfort our people because, you know, we're in a lowest state right about now, all right? But these words of prophecy, Comfort the Lord's people so that they can make it through the battle. Alright? Go, go ahead and bring that stuff out. First Timothy 5 and 20. Yeah. Them that sin rebuke before all, the others also may fear. Them that sin rebuke before all. Alright. So he didn't say he didn't say hide, hide it and you know try to try not to offend them. Right, he said, cry loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sin. Then that sin rebuke before all, that others also may see it and fear. All right, so that, that's part of what we're coming out here to do. I right, rebuke our people, reprove our people, prepare them for the battle of the day of the Lord. Because if you're not righteous, all right, if you're not considered righteous in the eyes of the Lord in that day, if you haven't put on the righteous garments of Yahweh Shai, all right, then what's going to happen to you? You're going to be destroyed in the time that we're coming into. All right, give me a. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 17. All right. Yep. This is, uh, I'm going to get this right quick. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15, all right? And it reads, it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. All right, so the Lord, he's saying, Behold, because this is this book, Revelation, all right, the first chapter, Revelation 1 and 1 is the revelation, meaning the revealing of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, all right, going into uh, what he's going to do when he comes, all right, when he's revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, all right. So let's get that again. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. And how does a thief come? He comes when you least expect, unexpectedly, all right. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. All right, and, and once again, watch. Okay, that word watch. Blessed is he that watch it. I right, watch for what? Watch these prophecies, line it up with line it up with what's going on in the world. All right, and keep it his garments. What do, what do the garments represent? It's one hundred percent truth according to the Bible. That's what the garments represent. All right, blessed is he that watch it, and keep it his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. All right, so we come and we we reprove and we rebuke our people. All right, so that they you know they understand the one hundred percent truth according to the Bible, and they they're not walking out here naked. All right, because if, if you don't have your, your garments on, all right, representing this truth, all right, the righteousness of the Lord, then what's going to happen to you in that day? You're going to be trodden under the foot. You're going to be destroyed, all right? So this is an act of love right here, being out here, preaching this word, all right? This is an act of love right here, rebuking our people, all right, telling them to get right with the God of the Bible before that death and destruction comes. Go ahead and bring up that scripture. Leviticus 19 and 17. 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in thy wise, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. All right, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. All right, so people of the world, you know, they always say, you, you, you so negative, you hating, this and that, yada, yada. But what does the scriptures call hate? All right, the scriptures calls, calls hate, not rebuking, all right, allowing someone to continue in sin, allowing them to continue in wickedness. That's that's what the scriptures call rebuke, uh, hatred, all right? That's what the scriptures call hatred. See, this right here, once again, this is an act of love, all right? Pre preaching 100% truth according to the Bible, all right? Give me um, Romans chapter 13 and verse 8, all right? This is, this because what? This is 100% truth. What is it going to do for you, all right? This is St. John chapter 8 and verse... Uh, uh, I'll start at verse um, 30. It says, Lord, Yahweh shall speaking. And as he spake those words, many believed on him. Then said Yahweh to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. All right? So once again, that represents these garments. Okay? The word, all right, it's 100% truth according to the Bible, represents these, these garments. And many, you know, many have, many have, uh, have came into this truth and fell out, went back into the world, all right, you know, whatever. And what, what's that going to lead to? It ain't going to lead to nothing good for them. All right, but this is uh, St. John chapter 8 and verse 32. All right, and it reads, it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right, you're going to know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The 100% truth according to the Bible, not what they're teaching in these, uh, in these Christian churches, all right? They ain't teaching nothing up in there. The Christian church, the Catholic church, it's all, it's all a bunch of crap. It's all nonsense, all right? It's all lies. Got you in there celebrating customs of the heathen, telling you the laws are done away with, all right? Foolishness, you see? That's not the 100% truth according to the Bible, all right? Telling you that pretty much that you could just live in a, life, a lifestyle of sin. They're not going to say that, but when you say that the law is done away with, well, well, according to the Bible, in the New Testament, sin is a transgression of the law, all right? So if you don't believe in the law, you don't know the law, then then you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be um, what you looking for? You're gonna be liable to, to break it continuously to live the life of a sinner, all right? And sinners are not gonna make it into the kingdom of heaven. Contrary to what the Christian church has taught you, sinners are not gonna make it into the kingdom of heaven. They'll, well, they'll be there, but they have to they have to die first. All right, they're not gonna inherit the kingdom. All right, they're they're gonna have to face the wrath of the Lord. All right, go ahead, go ahead, bring it, I'll bring that to up. Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. All right. So owe no man anything but to love one another. All right. And we just read what, what hate is. Hate is to not reprove your brother. All right. But go ahead and read what, uh, keep reading. For this, thou should not commit adultery, thou should not kill, thou should not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if any, there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this, in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right, right. So, so that's keeping the law. So really, that's what true love is. All right, love is keeping those laws and also bringing that necessary rebuke all right, when it is needed. All right. Thank you, by the way. All right, I got a scripture I want to bring out real quick. Okay, this is uh, Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to get in the New Living Translation. All right. And then once again, we come to get that warning. So I can bear with me. All right, Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to get uh, verse 6 in the New Living Translation. All right, and it says, come on. It says, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. All right, so don't be fooled by those vain speakers. All right, those who, who say, oh, you know, they, they, they want to constantly talk about the mercy of the Lord, but they don't tell you the, the, the other side because the Lord is all about balance. Yes, he is a merciful God, but he's about balance, all right? They don't want to tell you that the Lord kills and he makes alive. I that he wounds and he heals. Give me a first Samuel chapter two and verse six. Right. See, they don't want to tell you about these things. So don't be fooled by those who tell you the Lord is not going to punish 
you know, you for, for living a lifestyle of sin, wickedness, and iniquity. All right? Because that's what they're telling our people, man. Don't be fooled by that. All right? Read the Bible for yourself. See for yourself. The Lord is still the same uh, uh, vengeful power that he was back in the Old Testament. All right? Don't, don't be fooled by, you know, by the people that's telling you that, oh, you can, you can do whatever you want. We're under grace now. All right? Yada, yada. Don't, don't listen to that. All right? Because that's going to get you destroyed. Okay, go ahead and bring that out. 1 Samuel 6 and 2. 1 Samuel chapter uh, 2 and verse 6. Actually. First chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 2. And verse 6. And verse 6. Yep. For this cause, pay ye tribute oh, also. Hold on. That's not it. 6 and 2. Nah, 2. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on the wrong one. 1 Samuel 2. I got it. All right. 1 Samuel 6 and 2. No, 1 uh, Samuel 2 and 6. 2 and 6. 1 oh. Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. That's right. So the Lord kills and he makes alive. He brings down to the grave and lifts up. All right. You know, so so disobedience, what is that going to lead to? It's going to lead to you being deleted. All right. Not only does he kill and he make alive, he wounds and he heals, but he also can bring hell on you in this life. All right. Go ahead and get the next scripture, verse 7. Verse Call 7. It out. Yep. First Samuel. Two and seven. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lift up. That's right. So he could not only does he kill and he make alive, all right, he also all right, he makes poor and he makes rich. So he could put hell on you on this side, all right? And that's that's why it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living power. All right. This is uh Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus. Okay, yeah. This is it is weird. Weird. All right. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. All right, 1 Samuel, I select like it. Sirach 16 and 11, all right? And it reads, it says, And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is marvel if he escape unpunished. For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure, all right? So mercy and wrath are with the Lord, and he is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure, okay? So you don't, it's not, it's not a power that you wanna play around with, all right? right? He's not coming to play footsies with nobody, all right? You know, he, he, he's not, he's not the nice guy that, that they told you, all right? He kills and he makes alive, he wounds and he heals. He's mighty to forgive, but he's also mighty to pour out displeasure, all right? Bad times. All right, so it's, it's nothing to joke around about. That's why we, you know, we constantly give you warning from the God of the Bible. Give me uh, Ezekiel 3 and 17. Yep. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Follow the show. Okay. Let me know when you got it. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's right. He says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. So that's once again kind of reiterating. All right. That's what a watchman does. All right. The Lord, he's put these words in our mouth and we come to speak them to, to the Lord's people. We'll give you warning from the God of the Bible. All right. That if you don't repent and turn back, then it's going to be dire consequences. All right, keep reading. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. All right, so if we don't come out here and give you warning from the God of the Bible, uh, week in and week out, what's going to happen? All right, eventually the Lord is going to send those deaf angels are going to put the green light on you. But if we don't warn you, then your blood is going to be on our hands. Uh -huh. All right? So, so we, got to, we got to come out here and bring out that word. Keep reading. Uh -huh. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. That's right. So if we, if we give you warning and you say, now nah, I'm going to do what I want to do, you know, what, you know, bump what you're talking about. 
I'm sick of hearing that Bible stuff and what's going to happen to you. All right. The Lord's going to delete you, but your blood is off of our hands. All right? We've done our part. All right. Amen. You know, we can lead a camel to water, but we can't make him drink. All right. You know, Jake is hard headed, man. He ain't going to listen. He's going to continue doing what he want to do. All right. Being wicked as hell until that death and destruction come. Yeah. And that's prophesied. That's in the scriptures. All right. Give me uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Go down to where it says, uh, it's like, let me, let me pull it up. Alright, Isaiah chapter 6, and start at verse, um, start at verse 6. 6, okay. Isaiah, Actually, start at 5, start at 5. Like, yeah. 6 and 5. Then said, Ah, woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. All right, right. So what's happening here is Isaiah, all right, he, you know, he's dealing with the angel, and he's about to he's about to put the words of the Lord in, in Isaiah's mouth. And Isaiah says, like, he's, he's questioning, like, am I even worthy? And he says, I'm a man of unclean lips, all right? And I come from a people of unclean lips. He's talking about Jacob. All right, and that's how a lot of us are. And the vast majority of us, you know, we're not perfect. All right, sometimes we use harsh language. We stammer when we speak. We stutter. All right, we might not we might not be the best public speakers. Have the most smoothest voice. You know, have the have the best uh, have the best um, exegesis, or whatever they call it. All right, you know, we might not we might not be the ones. You know, we're not the ones that you would think of. You know, that can give the fancy motivational speeches. We're not none of that. All right. You know, but the Lord, he's chosen the, the foolish to confound the wise, all right? He's chosen the weak to confound the mighty, okay? So he's chosen us. He set us up, give you 100% truth according to the Bible, the things that, the parts of the Bible that the, the, the you know, uh, the plantation Christianity pastor, he's not going to teach you these things, all right? He's not going to teach you this stuff because he's going he gonna to lose that money. That's what he's concerned about. He's not concerned for, for salvation uh, of the elect. He's concerned about filling his pockets, about building up treasure in this life, all right? And that, that's what, that's, you know, uh, two-thirds of our people, they're, they're, they're still in that mindset. That's why he says, I come also from a people of unclean lips, all right? Jake is full of guile. Their heart is full of malice, wickedness, and evil eye against their brothers, all right? So Isaiah's like, am I even worthy? Am I even worthy to go in, and are the people I, I'm going to speak to, are they even worthy? All right, keep reading. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. All right, this live coal represents the words of the Lord, all right, being put in the mouth for you to speak. All right, he, he, said, he said, when he put that, that words of the Lord in his mouth, he said, thus has thy iniquity been purged. All right, so us, we're also, you know, saving ourselves by being out here preaching this gospel. All right, when, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, first and foremost, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. All right, we're also being edified as we're prophesying to you. All right, so our iniquity is being purged by going out here and converting the sinner from the error of his way. All right, let me get, let me get a quick precept on that. All right, the book of James, chapter 5 and verse 20. You hold, you hold what you got, I'll get this one. All right, it goes into that though. It tells you that he that converted a sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Right. All right, this is James chapter five and verse twenty. All right, actually, I shall start at um, I start at nineteen. It says, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him. All right, so if if you see a brother that's err a brother that's erring, erring from the truth, meaning that he's He's straight away from the truth. He's not. He's not uh, living according to the, you know, the laws, the statutes, commandments of the Bible. Living according to what the scriptures say. All right. And one convert him. It says, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. All right. So, you know. So this, this, uh, us being out here prophesying right, unto your edification is also, you know, saving our souls as well. All right. You know, because we're you know we're covering our sins right. by being out here preaching to you. 
All right, go ahead, get the next verse. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. All right, and that's, that's what it was. See, the Lord, he called, all right, and we answered. All right, the Lord, he, he, he knocked on that door, and we opened that door, and he, he came and he supped with us, all right? And right. you go to that word sup, it means like have supper or dinner together. So the Lord has fed, uh, fed us with the spiritual food, uh -huh. all right, and now we're feeding you, all right? Okay, keep reading. And he said, go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Right, so he said to the angel, uh, he spoke out, he said, go and make the ears of these people fat, all right, and their eyes blind so they can't see, and they cannot hear. All right. So we know that vast majority are blinded. They're not going to understand what we're talking about. All right. Because it's not, it's not for everyone. It's for the elect. I get that next verse. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Right. So he said, how long are, are, is Jacob going to be blinded? All right until the, the cities be wasted and the land be utterly desolate. Okay, so this, you know, the vast majority of people, they're not gonna get it, all right? They're, they're gonna have to know the Lord after death by pain. Let me go ahead and get that right quick. Uh -huh. All right, it's the book of um, Second Ezra, chapter nine. Oh, Salaki, bear with me. All right, Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse, um, Let's see. 22, I believe it is. All right, actually, nope, that's not it. Uh, second Ezra 9 and verse... I'll start, I'll start at verse uh, 8. All right, and it reads, it says, 7. It says, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. All right, so faith is what's really going to save you, grace. All right, but how do you show that you got faith? Do your works, all right? You can't just you can't just say you got faith and then you you know you live like a demon, all right? You're selling drugs, you're doing drugs, you take the chip, all right? You, you take the mark of the beast, all right? You can't you can't just say you got faith. You gotta you gotta live it, all right? You gotta walk you gotta walk the, uh, walk the talk, all right? Continuing on, second Ezra nine and uh and it's like it. second Ezra nine and eight. It says and shall be preserved. From the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders if i have sanctified them for me from the beginning all right so that the elect were chosen from the foundation of the earth all right it says then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments all right so those have, they're gonna be in pitiful case all right because when the lord pops up they're not gonna have their garments on all right so they're gonna be they're gonna be, uh, you know, stumped out, man. They're not gonna be seen as righteous. They're not gonna have that the wa, the mark of exemption from judgment. All right. It says that there, that those which not have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully, shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, so they got the fancy, you know, house, career, they got money, you know, they receive benefits in this life, but they don't know the Lord. It says, and they that have loathed my law, they hated the law, while they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. So when the Lord was calling out by the men of the Lord, calling them out to repent, they understood not, but they despised it, right? It says the same must know it after death by pain. All right, give me um, Mark 4 and 12, all right? The same must know it after what? After death by pain, all right? So they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna go, be in the kingdom the reincarnation but they're not going to inherit the kingdom they're going to have to die on this side all right and come back on the other side through the loins of the elect all right and i'm gonna get this right quick this is uh continuing on second Ezra 9 i'm gonna skip down to verse 15 i'll start uh, so, so like at 14 it says then answered i and said 
I have said before and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Like as a wave is greater than a drop. All right? So there's gonna be, there's gonna be many more that perish than of them which shall be saved. All right? And, and those, those that are gonna be saved, that's gonna be the elect. All right? And they're gonna return back to the Lord. All right? The son of righteousness is gonna arise with healing in his wings for those that, that turn back in Zion. All right? But, um, and once I got, I'm gonna read this next verse and you can start reading yours. Uh, Second Ezra is nine and twenty-two. It says, "I should." Uh, I'm gonna start at twenty. It says, "So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril, because of the devices that were coming to it. All right, the, the, the plots, the schemes. So the Lord looked at the world. All right, and there's, there's peril. Okay, meaning you know dangers, evils." All right, all throughout the face of the earth. This, this, you know, it tells you that, that the, the old world was wide. All right, this world is very narrow and full of sorrows. Okay, it says, so that why is that? Because of the vices that were coming to it. And I saw and spared it greatly. And I've kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. All right, so he kept a grape of a cluster. All right, you have a cluster of grapes. That, rep the, the, that, that cluster represents a lot of people. He said, I took one grape out of the cluster of a great people and I'm, that's what that's what I'm going to deliver all right and that's the elect it says verse 22 let the multitude perish then which was born in vain and let my grape be kept and my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect all right so with great labor has the Lord made his grape that he kept perfect all right through, through this through his spirit he poured out his holy spirit upon them and purged out that iniquity. All right, he's refined them as gold as well. Let's get that right quick. I'll have you read yours soon. All right, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 48. All right, Isaiah chapter 48. This is how he makes that great perfect. All right, Isaiah 48 and 10. Okay, and it reads, it says, Behold, I have, behold, I have refined thee. I refine means to, to cleanse, to perfect. All right. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. All right. So affliction is how he has, how he refines us. He's making, he's making us perfect. All right. In the spirit, you know, it doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes in the flesh because we're still, you know, in, in these vile bodies. All right. We're still in this wicked flesh. But he said, I have refined thee. All right. He said, I have refined thee, and I've chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. All right, and, and you know, and, and these, and these, uh, we, we take, we take joy in that. All right, we take joy in that because, you know, we know that if we suffer with the Lord, then when He's raised up, all right, then we're also going to glory with Him. All right, let's get that right quick. The Book of First Peter, chapter four. All right, First Peter chapter four, and I'm gonna start at verse one. It says, "For as much then as the anointed has suffered for us in the flesh." Arm yourselves likewise yeah. with the same mind, all right? So arm yourselves with the same mind. Be prepared to suffer in this truth, all right? Because that's how the Lord is refining us. He didn't He didn't send you, you know, we're still in captivity, all right? This is our punishment. But see, it tells you in uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11, I believe, that the Lord has plans for you. I have plans for good and not of evil. I have to, to plans for you to prosper and to give you a future, all right? But, but you got to go through what? You got to go through the suffering. You got to go through the test of trials. All right, before honor comes what? Humility, okay? For as much then as the Hamashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, okay? Verse two, it says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. All right, so when you suffer in the flesh, all right, what? You, if, if you allow it to, it refines you that you that you no more will live uh, according to the will of men, but to the will of the Most High. All right. And if you could, you could drop that one. Give me um, Romans chapter five. All right. Yeah, Romans chapter five. I'm going to have you start at verse one, but after, after I read this. OK, okay. continuing on. All right. Uh, first Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. And verse um, verse three, it says, 
for the time past of our life may suffice to us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So that time when we was doing what the people of the world was doing, all right, trying to uh, appease the people of the world, trying to live like them, you know, make friends with the people of the world, all that, that time is past, all right? We're done with that now. We're not living like that no more. It says, when we walk in lasciviousness and lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, all right? We're in, they think it's strange that you run not with them to that same excess of riot speaking evil of you. So we're approached for the sake of the Lord, approached for the name of Yahweh Bashan Shai. All right? We're hated because we've changed our lives. We don't want to live like people of the world anymore. All right? You know, we're not we're not uh, celebrating customs of the heathens. We're not breaking the dietary laws. We're not uh, partaking in the, the filthy and abominable sexual practices of Babylon the Great. All right? Peanut butter chasing. All right? You know, uh, transformers, transformism. And we're not doing, we're not doing none of these things. All right, not that not, not that we ever, ever were. Okay, but you know maybe we were committing adultery. All right, we're not doing these things anymore. You see, maybe some of us were drug dealers. We're not that which which the drug dealers are witch or warlock. All right, we're not witches and warlocks no more. All right, you know we, we are we're we're refined. Okay, the Lord put that He put that belt on us, and we took heed to His word. All right, and we we turned our lives around. We changed. And then what, it, what happened after that? He poured his spirit upon us. It tells you in Proverbs, the first chapter. But I'm going to skip down. All right. Uh, 1 Peter 4. At verse, um, verse 12, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. All right? Because we already, we already know. It's already written. He said, I'm going to refine thee in the furnace of affliction. So don't think it's strange. When that fire comes upon you, expect it. It's part of the game. All right, the Lord said in Zephaniah 3 that I will leave in the midst of thee a poor and afflicted people. He didn't say nothing about, you know, our people going to be rich, driving around in Bentleys and all that. That's that's Esau's inheritance. All right, we got something much better coming to us. All right, and we're going to read about it in the next few verses. 1 Peter 4 and verse, um, let's see, 1 Peter chapter 4. And verse 13, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of his sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. All right. So partake in the sufferings of the Lord. All right. So that when what? When his glory is revealed, you may also be revealed with glory. All right. Your glory is going to be revealed as well. Do you have a shot? All right. It says, it says, um, verse 14. 1 Peter 4 and 14, but, uh, yeah, but if you be reproached for the name of the Hamashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit and glory of the Lord resteth upon you, all right, on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified, all right, so when, when people come, come up against you, they talk bad about you, all right, for the, for the sake of the Lord, be happy, they did the same thing to the true prophets, they did the same thing to our righteous forefathers, all right, so it's a blessing. You can go ahead and get that Romans 5, start at verse 1. Yeah. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh through our Lord, Yahweh Shah. Yep. By whom also we have assessed by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That's right, you keep reading. And not only so, that we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Right. And hope make it not a shame, because the love of Yahweh is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Right, the Holy Spirit. Holy yeah. Spirit. Right. You want to speak on that? Yeah, yeah. So what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit is an interpreter of Yahweh, the Father. So the Father, uh, being the creator of all things, uh, gave us these commandments as they were written to Moses and to the children of Israel back in the latter days 
Well, I, I was speaking more about, I was talking about speaking on the, the, the suffering, how, what, what we read earlier. Read it again, Romans 5, start at the top. Okay. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh through our Lord, Yahweh Shah. Yeah, keep reading. Uh -huh. By whom also we have access by faith to this grace where we, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of Yahweh. So I keep reading. Uh -huh. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also knowing the tribulations work of patience. Yep, agree. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. I'm sorry. And patience, experience, and experience hope. All right, you want to speak on that? Uh -huh. So what it's saying here is that we glory in these tribulations, the things that we suffer here. Right. So these things are to help us to see the Lord. Because a lot of times if we have it too easy, you know, and we rich and we rich, have all this uh, glory of men, then we don't have any focus on, on Yahweh, on the Lord. That's right, exactly. Now give me uh, yeah. Psalms 119 and verse 71. Is that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. That's right. If, if, if you have everything you want on this side, right. then you're not thinking about the Lord, man. Right. All right? So he, what does he do? He sends adversity your way, right. all right, so that he can get you to focus on him. And ultimately, uh -huh. it's for your good, uh -huh. all right, to make you better. Right. All right? Let me know when you got that. Uh, Psalms 119. 119. Psalms 119 and verse 71. Okay. Yep. Alright, I got it. Let me know when you're ready to explain that. Yep, go ahead and bring it up. Alright. Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes. Right, right. Do so you want to speak on that? No, you go right ahead. Okay. All right, Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. See, you got you to gotta get out of the mindset. Give me Job chapter 5 now. You got to get out of the mindset of, why is the Lord doing this to me? You know, why is he making my life hard? Why did I lose my job? Why did my woman leave me? Oh, you got to get out of that mindset, man. The Bible right here tells you exactly the reason why. Because, because he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. All right, the Lord said... He says, it's good, uh, in Psalms 119.71, right, it's good that I have been afflicted. It's good that I went through that furnace of affliction, went through the spiritual fire, the hard times. My woman left me. I'm on child support. All right? I lost my job. Right? Everybody hates me. Because what? That's how you get that. That's what brings you closer to the Lord. All right? And I can speak. That's a personal testimony for myself. All right? This, that's what makes you think about the, the statutes of the Lord. Like I said, when you got everything that you want on this side, all right, you ain't thinking about the Lord, man. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 30. All right, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse, um, let's see, verse uh, 5. All right, it says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. It says, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. All right, so add not unto his words, meaning, you know, don't be a, a, a preacher of false doctrine. All right, and then, of course, you know, literally, it's, it's, it's in the law not to take or add to the word, all right, literally, all right, but, you know, bring it out exactly as the Lord says. Okay, continuing on, it says, two things have I required of thee, deny me them not before I die. All right, let's see what it says. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. That's, that's, a, that's a wise man's prayer right there. Uh -huh. That's a wise man's request. He said, give me neither poverty nor riches, uh -huh. but feed me with food convenient for me. So, you know, part of that affliction is you're not going to have abundance, but you're going to have exactly what you what need, you need. Yeah, right? Yeah. You're going to have exactly what you need. As a matter of fact, so like, give me uh, Philippians 4 and 11. My bad. All right, we'll come back to that. Yeah, I get Job 5. Yeah, give me Philippians 4 and 11. All right, so I'm going to read that again. It says... Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Okay? So if you're full, what are you going to do? You're going to get proud. All right? And you, you, we, we've seen Jacob do that. 
Right. All right, Jake, you know, he, he, the Lord put him in a higher state, all right, for a period of time. And what did Jake do? He got proud and he turned against the Lord. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a wise man's prayer right there. All right, continuing on. Let's read that again. Verse 9, it says, Lest I be poor and deny thee and say who is the Lord, or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Right. Okay, so he's not going to give you too much because then, you know, everybody can't handle that. All right, most people, you know, they, they get, like you see a spoiled kid who's had everything they, they've ever wanted their whole life. Right. All right, look how they act. All right, that's Esau. Look at how they act, man. Full of pride, arrogance, not thankful, unholy, unholy. right? All these different unholy. things, man. You see? But then on the other side of that, if you're, you know, in extreme poverty, then the Lord, you know, it may, it may cause you to steal. And, and, you know, if you suffer too much, then, you know, you know, if you're a righteous man, you're not going to curse the Lord. But a lot of people, they... They can't handle that, man. They can't handle the suffering. That's why a lot of brothers fall out of the truth. Right. All right, because when, when times start getting hard, you know, uh -huh. the women ain't calling your phone no more. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you might be on the streets, you know, for a short period of time. The Lord always going to lift you back up, right? But these things happen. Brothers start, they start folding. They fall out the truth, man, because they can't take the trials and tribulations. And we ain't even came to Jacob's trouble yet. All right, the, uh, Yahweh I said, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your faith was weak. This, all right, so, so we ain't even came into the day of trouble yet. What are you going to do in the time of Jacob's trouble? What are you going to do when, when heavy persecution arises? All right, because that, that time is coming, man. That's why you got to prepare yourself for the battle of the day of the Lord right now as we speak. All right, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. See? All right, give me Joel chapter 5. I believe verse around verse 19 where it says, uh, happy is a man if the, the most high uh, chasten it, something like that. I despise not the chastening of the Lord. Okay. Check it right now for it. Job 5. And uh, 17, start there. 17. Yep. Job 5 and 17. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh cor correct. Yep. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Right. So he said, Behold, happy is the man that the Heavenly Father corrects. Okay? Because his corrections, they lead to long life. Right. All right? They lead to longevity. They lead to peace. You see? Life forever. That's right. Keep breathe. Yeah. But he maketh sore and bound him up. He wound him and his hand maketh whole. That's right. So he, you know, he makes sore. He, he puts that punishment on you. put that belt on you sometimes. I like like any good father would, right? But let's get this right quick. Okay? Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1. My son, forget not my forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake them, forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Yeah. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. All right? And that's what that correction of the Lord is going to bring. Right. So be happy when the Lord corrects you. I right, keep reading. He shall deliver thee. Uh, Reread re, uh, re the whole thing, Salaki. So Start at verse 17. Okay. Yeah, and then call it out. All right. Job 5th chapter and 17. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. That's right, yeah. Uh huh. He make a sword and bind it up. He wound it and his hands make hold. Yep. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. Yep. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. That's right. Uh -huh. That's very elect. Yep. Yeah. Here. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Right. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. 
For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, mm -hmm. and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. That's right. So, so he's, ta he's talking about protection for his elect, all right? Uh -huh. For those that take the correction of the Lord, all right, they turn back from, from wickedness, all right, yeah, and they, they, they take it. that rebuke, yeah. all right, and they, and they give me Psalms 50 and 5. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 5, all right? Yeah. For those who take the rebuke of the Lord, all right, uh -huh. the correction, they take heed, all right, and they, and they, they apply the wisdom of the Lord to their life, all right, and live according to what he tell you to do. He said, I'm going to deliver you from all these evils, from all these troubles, uh -huh. all right? You go ahead and get to Psalm chapter 50 and verse 5. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tom, Tom, yeah. Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me, my sacrifice. So like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm at 15, verse 15. Okay. Psalms 15, so, verse 15. Uh -huh. But, yeah, that, hey, but that's I, I still can, a good one. Let's go into that. Well, yeah, I was speaking of that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah uh, you know, gather my saints together. All right, who are the uh -huh. Lord's saints? I just told you. Uh -huh. Those who made a covenant with him by sacrifice. So the saints are the Israelites. Uh -huh. All right, and on this side, there's going to be, you know, the daughter of Zion, which is the remnant, the elect. All right, that's that's the only ones that's going to take heed. Uh -huh. So we're gathering together, all right, communion, uh -huh. all right, and, and bringing out this 100% truth according to the Bible. Okay, all right, keep I'll get to verse 15. Okay, okay. verse 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Right, so the Lord says, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. All right, scroll down again, I think verse 21. Okay. Oh, this is 23 years old. Well, that's okay. I read, read that last one again that you read before, 15. Uh -huh. uh, Call it out again. Yeah. Psalms 50 and 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Right, call upon the Lord in the day of trouble, all right? Those that are you of the hopeful elect. He's the one that, that's going to deliver us. He's the one that brought these calamities upon us, and he's the one that's going to deliver us from that, all right? But who is he going to deliver? Get that verse 23. Verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorify me. And to him that ordereth his compensation aright, will I show the salvation of your house. Alright, right. So him that ordered his conversation aright. Alright, you go into that word conversation, it's anastrophe, meaning your manner of life. So you order your manner of life according to the Lord. Alright, and he said to him, shall I will I show the salvation of the most high all right i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a few verses this is uh psalms chapter 27 and verse 5 it says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion and i want you to give me isaiah 26 and 20. uh right yep psalms 27 and 5 though it says actually you know what Woo! i'm gonna start i'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rise up a little bit all right Man, I'm gonna wait till you get that because I want you to hear this. You say Isaiah, Isaiah 26. 26. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay. Yeah, okay, hold that. L listen to what I'm about to read. This is five. Right, Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Right. Whom shall I fear? Yeah. The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat upon my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, and a host means an army, though an army right, should come against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Right. It says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up about mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing yea, and I will sing praises unto the Lord. 
So he says, in time of in, in the time of trouble, shall he hide me in his pavilion. All right, so when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, all right, the Lord is going to deliver his elect, all right? Those that dwell in the secret places of the Lord, they're going to be covered in that time. All right, go ahead and bring that scripture out. Yeah. Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the, the indignation be overpassed. That's right. So come, my people. All right. Who the Lord's people? All right. The elect. Okay. The elect of the nation of Israel. There you go. All right. He said, come, my people, enter thou into my chambers. All right. And hide about thee. Okay, until the indignation of the Lord be overpassed. So he's going to hide us when everybody else is in trouble. All right, when that day of evil comes, the Lord is going to hide his elect. All right. So, um, let me see. What's the one I want to get? Psalms 91. All right, Psalms 91 and verse 1. And it reads, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. All right, and then his feathers, his wings, that's the angels. He's going he's gonna to send his angels down to deliver his elect. Give me uh, Psalms 34 and 7. All right. It says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes that noonday, which is those isogen nuclear missiles, those arrows that are going to fly out. All right, the Lord said, you, you don't have to fear those. No weapon that, are, that is formed against thee shall prosper. All right, you don't got to fear all that if you're of the elect. This is what it says. Verse 7, Psalms 91 and 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall, it shall not come nigh thee. It's not going to come close to you. Right. Oh, oh crap. Like it. Page flip. So, right. All right. It says, verse 8, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. There you go. There you go. See that? Uh -huh. He's going to give his angels charge <laughs> over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All right, which perfectly lines up. Go ahead and bring out that Psalm first, 34. First, it lines right up. All right, Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver him. Right, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them from all their troubles. All right, in the next verse. Oh, fear the Lord. Oh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Right. Uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And blessed is the man that trusts in him. Not in your money, right. not in your fancy car, not in your houses, yeah, not in your career. All right. Come on. Because all that's going to be wiped away. Uh, all right. Keep reading. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Right. There's no want to them that fear him. All right. You fear the Lord over, over fear of Esau. What did the Lord say? He said, my servant shall eat, my servant shall drink. All right. Give me Isaiah 65. All right. I'm going to continue on in my verse. Psalms, going back Psalms 91 and verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So they're going to, they're going to protect you from from, you know, making mistakes. All right, he's going to deliver you from temptation. It says, thou shalt tread upon the lion. I shouldn't say making mistakes. You're going to make mistakes, but he's not going to, he's going to deliver you from being destroyed. Right. What I should say. All right. It says, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot. All right. Going into Esau. Because he has set, listen to this, Psalms 91 to 14. Very important. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. There we go. See? Listen to that. Yep. So, what's his name? Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So he said, go. I will set him on high because he has known my name. All right. So the people teaching you the name don't matter. All right. They still got you calling on JC, you know, on 
the most high in Christ blessed, all right, calling on Yah. Okay, those aren't the names of the Lord. All right, the Lord said, I will deliver you because you have known my name. And who's going to know his name? All right, let me get that right quick. All right, I'm, I'm going to get this next verse and I'll get who's going to know his name. Okay, verse 15, it says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And Lord, will we be that number? All right. Now, who's going to know the name of the Lord? Let's get that right quick. Not everybody up under the face of the earth. Not everybody. Not everybody. All right. Isaiah 52 and verse 6. It says, uh, let's see. I'm going to start at 5. Now, therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord? All right. The Lord is looking down on the earth. He said, what, what, what's going on here? All right. What's going on in the earth? Which he knows. Yeah. But, you know, he's just, you know, the Lord, he's, he's, the Lord is poetic. I, yeah. You know, the way he talks, the Lord, he's, he's very poetic. He's like a movie director. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he knows what's going on. It tells you, you know, it tells you in uh, Proverbs 15 and 3, the Lord sees everything under the sun. But, you know, he's, he's got to add some dramatic effect to it. You see? The Lord is like, he's like the, the ultimate movie director, right? So Isaiah 52, right, and verse 5. Now, therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? That they that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. So he says, look what you got going on here. He says, my people are set at naught. They're at the bottom. They're oppressed, spoiled forevermore. All right. Okay. And what else? All right. That they that rule over them cause them to howl. All right. Who's ruling over us? Esau, Edom. All right. And howl means to be in sore distress, to cry out in misery. All right. That's what we're doing. We're signing and crying to the Lord for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. All right. We're praying that the Lord shorten the days so that we... Are, 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 are brought out of this pit, all right, brought out of Babylon the Great, right? Okay, it says, and also, my name is continually every day blasphemed. So what? They call on the, on the false names. False name. All right, not only have they, they they changed the name of the Lord, took away the name of Yahweh, all right, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, but they changed his reputation because you go into that word name, it also goes into reputation, everything about him. Right. All right, they portrayed him to be, you know, a so-called white man sit up in the clouds, smiling at everything. That's not really in control. They tell you that, that Satan or the devil, all right, that he is somehow fighting against the Lord. There's a war in heaven and all that crap. That's not what the scripture's talking about, all right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a metaphor. It's a parable, right. okay? But, you know, so they, they, they make it seem like he's like some kind of, you know, bumbling, you know, guy that don't know what's going on. That doesn't have control of his creation. Uh -huh. That's completely false. Right. So they blaspheme his reputation, his name. All right. They told you they, they 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 changed. He said, "I am the same yesterday, today, and forever." There you go. But now they tell you, "Oh, that's the Old Testament God. Uh -huh. the, the God of the New Testament. He he's not he's not wrathful. He would never do anything. He would never hurt a fly." Yes. When I when obviously you look around you, you see people dying every day. Mm -hmm. That rapper just got killed last night. Mm -hmm. All right, celebrating his birthday. And who do you think did that? The Howard Bashem Yahweh Shai. He said, "Should they be evil in the city, and the Lord have not done it?" Right. So we're giving you the truth. While the rest of the people, they, they, they speak in lies, man. Yep. But look at this. I, who's going to know the name of the Lord? Isaiah 52 and 6. It says, Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, shall they know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. He said, my people shall know my name. My so, people, right. so the whole people, all the people in the world ain't going to be calling on the true name of the Lord. All right. It tells you in Malachi 1 that, that the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathens. All right, they're not gonna be calling on the name of the Lord. They're gonna be calling on 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 Jesus, on Yah, Yahuwah. All right, which I hate even mentioning these these names of these false names, man. But you know, for edification's sake, so you know. All right, that's not the name of the Lord, man. My people are gonna know my name in that day. All right, who are his people? His servants. All right, those who have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right, let's let's get that right quick. Isaiah. You, you hold that. I'm going to get something else. Isaiah oh, okay. chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse... Um, let's see. Who's going to have the testimony of the Lord? Oh, okay. All right, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. It says, Bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. All right, so everybody ain't got the testimony of the Lord. Right. He said, Bind up the testimony, meaning meaning, uh, take it away and hold it and give it to a, a specific people. Uh -huh. Bind up the testimony and seal the law uh -huh. among my disciples. Seal the law. Among my disciples. So what, what is the testimony of the Lord? Let's get that right quick. Yeah. All right. 
Every, that's, how do you know who has a testimony of the Lord? Well, we're going to read it to you right here according to the Bible. All right, Revelation chapter 19, all right, and verse 10. It says, I'm going to start at verse 9, actually. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of the Most High. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the angel speaking to John the Revelator. Okay, so, and he's going to tell you who, what's the testimony of the Lord. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren. To the angels there are brethren. And have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so the men of the Lord, they're gonna be out there on the highways and byways prophesying. That's who has the testimony of the Lord, those who prophesy. All right, meaning tell you what's gonna happen before the event happens. Not these, these TikTok prophets, all right, these social media keyboard warriors, but the men of the Lord that are out here doing the work. Those are the true disciples of the Lord that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right, I'm gonna get one precept. I'm gonna let you get what you got. So lock you. All right, and I want you to get the verse. I think it's starting at verse uh, oh, 12, 13. So my servant shall eat, my servant shall drink. Okay, start at 11. Okay, start at 11. Well, I read that part of verse 15. All right, but anyways, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 28. All right, and what does it read? It says, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. So if, you, if the Lord put in, put the dream in your in your in your brain, He said, "Go and tell it." And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. If you got the words of the Lord, if you put the words in your mouth, then what are you doing being a couch potato? All right, get up off your off your lazy backside and go out there and preach the word, man. But see, once again, that's the separation right there. All right, the true men of the Lord and those you know, and every man is not meant to be a, 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 a preacher per se. But you can still get involved in the ministry. You can That's still right. go out there. You can read. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can fellowship with the brothers. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7 and 24 tells you forsake not the assembly of the saints. Mm -hmm. All right? So you still got to come out there and, and, and get with the brothers and get involved. All right? You know? But uh, it's, let me read that again. Jeremiah 23 and 28. It says, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. I mean consistently. You can't be taking breaks. All right, we started off earlier with Isaiah 62 and 6, going into the, 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 the watchman that I sent shall not hold their peace day nor night. Day nor night. All right, if, you got, if you got the words of the Lord in you and the spirit is really on you, you can't, you can't just go a month, two months without feeding the sheep. What happens if you didn't feed your kids for a month? They're going to die. They're going to die. Right. All right, you, it's the same thing. You got to feed the flock of the Lord each and every single day with that good food, non-GMO, home-cooked meals. All right? It says, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. All right. And let's get this next verse, verse 29, Jeremiah 23 and 29. All right. It says, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So the word of the Lord is, is like a weapon. It's just a, like a fire. It burns people up. All right. But once again, that's because it's for the elect. It ain't for everybody. He said, bind. Bind the law and seal the testimony among my disciples. All right, go. and Lord's will be at that number. Yeah. But those who are true servants of the Lord, all right, what's going to happen in the day of trouble? All right, they're not going to be ashamed. Go ahead and bring out that scripture. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and start at uh, Isaiah sixty-five and eleven. I think it was. Isaiah sixty-five and eleven. The ye are they that forsake the Lord. Right. That forget my holy mountain. That prepare a table for that truth. And then furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and you shall bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spake, you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Right, so so he said, he said, those that are not my servants, he said, when I called, you didn't hear. All right. You, you put you set my counsel at night. You didn't want to hear nothing the Lord had to say, so I'm about I'm gonna number you to the sword. All right, and that's what we're warning you of, man. It's you know, it ain't it ain't no joke. We're warning you once again when the sword coming when 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 the, when the uh, watchman see the sword coming, he blows the trumpet. Yeah. All right, keep reading. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh: Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. That's right, my servant. Behold, right? He said, my servant shall eat. 
but ye shall be hungry. All right, keep reading. My servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. That's right. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You think the Lord playing about that? Give me a number. All right, you think the Lord playing about that? You think he's not going to make good on his word, man? All right. Let's get this. Isaiah chapter 55. All right. Isaiah chapter 55. And so like you. Hang on. Oh, my bad. Wrong, wrong chapter. All right, here we are. You think the Lord not going to make good on his word, man? All right. This is Isaiah chapter 55 and verse uh, 11. It says, so shall my word, so shall my word be. That goes forth out of my mouth. All right, so the Lord say, if I say it, I'm going to do it. And the Lord, it's, 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 the scripture specifically said, all right, thus saith the Lord, behold, my servant shall eat, my servant shall drink, yeah. but ye shall be hungry. My servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All right, you think the Lord, you think he playing around about that, man? All right. You got that, uh, Numbers 23 and 19? Uh -huh. Okay, hold up one sec. Uh, continuing on, Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall, be, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. All right. Mm -hmm. He says, if I if I say something gonna happen, it's gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. All right. No, the Lord is not a liar. All right. You got, you got that script? Uh huh. Bring it out. Numbers twenty-three and nineteen. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man. That he should repent. Right. Have he said? Go ahead, right. And shall he not do it? Or have he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Right. So the Lord is not a man that he should lie. Everything he said he's gonna do, he's gonna do, man. Alright. And he said he said he, I'm gonna deliver my elect. My servant shall eat, my servant shall drink. Alright? So he's not he's not a man that he should lie. The Lord ain't he ain't gotta lie to nobody, he ain't gotta answer to nobody, man. All right. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna close out with this. All right. This is um, Isaiah chapter 35 and three. It says, "Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Mm -hmm. Say to them that are of, of a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, yeah. even God with a recompense. Right. He will come to save you. All right. That's for the elect." It says, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. All right, and the dumb talking about the, the deaf. It says, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. So he said, I'm gonna make a way for my elect. That's what he said, I'm gonna make a way for my servant. All right, in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. It says, and the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons where each lake shall be grass with reeds and rushes. All right, so he's in the desert. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour, pour that water. And that land, we're talking about uh, Jacob, all right? Jer Jerusalem, I'm gonna pour my, this is Isaiah 44. I'm gonna pour water upon the dry ground and, and floods upon him that is thirsty, all right? Continuing on, it says, for, uh, Isaiah 35 and eight, and the highway shall be there a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. All right, so this is the way right here. We're telling you, all right, this is the way to, to, to righteousness, to Zion, all right? The unclean shall not pass over it, all right, meaning, meaning the wicked, because they can't learn righteousness. It tells you that in Isaiah 20, uh, I think Isaiah 26 and 10, the, the, the wicked cannot learn righteousness. So they're not going to, unclean and two-thirds of our people, they're not going to pass over. They're not going right, to, they're not going to take that, that straight and narrow pathway. It says, but it shall be for those the wafering men, though fools, shall not err therein. Uh -huh. Man, that's powerful right there. I'm going to read that again. Ooh, All right. right there. Yeah. Go ahead. Isaiah 35 and 8. Uh -huh. And a highway shall be there, a highway to righteousness, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, uh -huh. but it shall be for those, the wafering men, uh -huh. though fools, so the Lord said we were once fools, but what? but shall not err therein. So they're gonna walk, the, the elect is gonna walk in the ways of holiness and shall not err therein, all right? It says, no lion shall be there, and a lion is a, a, a beast, so I mean no danger is gonna be there. 
nor any ravenous beast shall go up upon their own. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. The redeemed, that's the elect. That's the elect. And yeah. the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs uh -huh. and everlasting joy upon their foreheads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Yeah, I like that. I that's like it right that. there. Yep. And so, I want to just give one uh, precept, if I may. Okay. Close yep. it out. Yep, bring it out. Revelations 22 and 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. The 12th verse. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Right, you want to speak on that? Yeah. That last verse? Yes. Yeah. 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 So the Lord is saying here, he said, I'm going to come quickly. You see, that's a beautiful thing. The Lord said, if you, if you, if you, uh, you don't want to do this, I'm not going to make you do it. I'm going to give you a choice. Right, right. So you can live holy or you can live unholy. Right, right. You can be righteous or you can be unrighteous. Right. But right. the Lord say, uh, out of this book come life. See? Yeah. And out of, out of it also come the curse. God created good and evil. So what side are you going to be on? Yeah, that's, that's what the Lord is saying here. But he say, whatever side you be on, I'm going to come quickly and my word will not tarry. Yep. God say, I'm going to come quickly. See? And I'm going and I'm I'm to judge. And I'm going to judge and give them every man according to the work that's done in the earth. That's right. Yep. So that's, that's a good scripture right there. Good close out. All right. So we're yeah. going to go ahead and close out with that. Lord's will is edifying. That being said, as always, we're going to give all praise, our honor, and our glory unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah, Wadah. That's right. Double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach you the rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere. I can keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith regardless of whether we're here or if they forbear. All right. We get ready to head down to El Paso. Right. Get another one in. Yep. That's why this one was a little bit short, only hour 15. That's all good. We got we got more preaching to do. All right, yep. so until next time, shalom and a Bible ball. All right, shalom. Let's get a quick thumbnail picture.